Welcome back to part 2 of my ride around the Cape Peninsula. Now yeah, we're gonna take the scenic route back to Cape Town. Past Simonstown and Cape Point. There in front is Glen Cairn, a uh, tranquil coastal village nestled between Fishhook and Simonstown. Glen Cairn is known for its natural beauty in a relaxed vibe and offers a perfect escape from the hustle and bustle. Glen Cairn's sandy beach is ideal for a peaceful day out. It's less crowded than some of the other beaches in the area. The next town on the route is Simonstown, which is one of South Africa's oldest towns. It's steeped in history and culture. It's located on the shores of False Bay, and it's not only home to the South African Navy, but also boasts stunning views and rich heritage. In the heart of Simonstown, there is the harbor and naval base. It was established in 1814. The Simonstown Naval Base is the main base of the South African Navy. You can see some impressive naval vessels docked here. The town's maritime history is fascinating and the si Simonstown Museum offers great insights into its naval past. Simonstown is filled with historical buildings, many of which date back to the 19th century. The Victorian and Georgian architecture adds a unique charm to the town. Don't miss the iconic Simonstown Railway Station, which has been serving the community since 1890 and the historic St. George's Street, the town's main road, lined with quaint shops and eateries. For history buffs, the Simonstown Museum is a must visit. Housed in the residency built in 1777, the museum offers a deep dive into the town's history, including its naval past and cultural heritage. Nearby, you'll find the Warrior Toy Museum, showcasing a vast collection of toy soldiers dolls and other collectibles, making it a fun stop for all ages. Uh, because it's a harbour town, it's very popular to come and eat fish and chips here. Some of the best fish and chips you can find in South Africa are here. One of the biggest attractions in Simonstown is Boulders Beach, home to a colony of African penguins. These adorable birds have been residents here since 1982 and the beach is now a protected area. It's one of the few places in the world where you can get up close to these charming creatures in their natural habitat. The boardwalks provide excellent viewing spots without disturbing the penguins. Yeah, down here is Boulders Beach where you get to the penguin colony. I'll just drive a little bit down. I'm not gonna go into the penguin colony today been there before, there's also a golf course here on the right. Look, penguin! The drive to Miller's Point is an adventure in itself, offering some of the most scenic coastal views in the Western Cape. Miller's Point is also a popular spot for boating and fishing. The boat launching site here is one of the best in the area, providing easy access to the rich fishing grounds of False Bay. 
If you love camping, you're in for a treat. Miller's Point Caravan Park offers a beautiful, well-maintained camping area with stunning ocean views. The park has all the necessary facilities, including clean restrooms, hot showers and electricity points. It also has a tidal pool and picnic area. The tidal pool is perfect for a refreshing swim, especially on a hot summer day. The surrounding picnic area is well equipped with tables, benches and braai facilities, making it an ideal spot for a family outing. The calm, clear waters are also great for snorkeling, allowing you to explore the marine life up close. Then in front of us is Cape Point, or the Cape of Good Hope Nature Reserve, which is one of the most iconic and scenic spots in the Western Cape. It forms part of Table Mountain National Park and is renowned for its stunning landscapes, diverse wildlife and rich history. Located at the southwestern tip of Africa, it's a must-visit destination for nature lovers and adventure seekers. Cape Point has been a navigational landmark for sailors for centuries. The old lighthouse, built in 1859, offers spectacular views of the Atlantic Ocean. The reserve is home to a wide variety of flora and fauna. You will encounter unique plant species from the Fainbos biome, one of the richest floral kingdoms in the world. The treacherous waters around here has claimed many ships over the centuries, leading to numerous shipwrecks along the coast. So this is the entrance to the Cape Point National Park. So if you look at the map of Cape Town that you see uh, just at the bottom there's this is uh, a peninsula sticking out to the south. So this is the Cape Point Nature Reserve. Uh, there is also a lighthouse which you can uh, visit at the Cape Point. And there you can also uh, go to a uh, Cape Point restaurant. There's also many wildlife around the Cape Point Nature Reserve, like uh, eland, zebras, ostrich, and many baboons. It's also a home to the Fainbos, the endemic plants. It's uh, one of the smallest but most diverse floral kingdoms in the world. So yeah, from here on we're going to continue past Scarborough, past Komiki and uh, Landatno up to the Chapman's Peak. Very nice little coastal town. Very popular among uh, retired people to come and uh, enjoy the quiet views of the day. The drive to Scarborough itself is a treat with some of the most scenic coastal routes in the Western Cape. It's a popular spot for surfing, kiteboarding, and beach combing. The beach is also dog friendly, making it a great place for a stroll with your furry friends. The natural beauty here is simply breathtaking, with the rugged coastline and clear blue waters creating a perfect backdrop for relaxation and outdoor activities. The town is known for its strong commitment to conservation and sustainability. The village is part of a conservation area and you will notice many eco-friendly homes and gardens designed to blend in with the natural environment. Let's go and have a look at the Scarborough Beach. The community here is passionate about preserving the unique flora and fauna of the area, making it a model for sustainable living. One of the best things about Scarborough is its tight-knit community and laid-back lifestyle. The village has a few charming cafes and local shops where you can enjoy a cup of coffee or find unique handmade goods. The sense of community here is strong, 
with regular events and gatherings that bring residents and visitors together. It's a place where you can truly unwind and experience the simple pleasures of life. Yeah, that was part two. Stick around for part three, where I'm going to be riding through Hout Bay, Chapman's Peak, Camps Bay, and up to Signal Hill in Cape Town. Thank you for watching.